So before we start, <clears throat> does anybody have any questions about anything? I do. Go, who was that? This is Brianna. Good morning. Come on, child. <laughs> um, so I was studying with a friend. Um, me and Ariana had a question um mm -hmm. when we were doing the um the quiz. Um, okay. can it be can it be superimposable like an image image and it not be a mirror image? Can it be superimposable if it's not a mirror image? And yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's possible. That's that. But if it's a mirror image, then it's not going to be superimposable. Remember, because it's not going to you're not going to be able to line everything up. Okay. It was just so a question um, it was like I went from I think it was like one of the questions mm -hmm. um, on the quiz, like the response that it gave after you got it right or wrong. It wasn't correct to what the actual answer was. Let me pull it up. I'll take about two minutes because I think <clears throat> one of those answers may have been messed up and I can yeah it was um I was able to you know get the answer right but it was like the response like this my second attempt I was able to get it right because like the first attempt was like kind of confusing of so like what it was asking I'm gonna pull it up I normally don't do this but I'm, I'm gonna do it because I'm gonna yeah, I'll wait like two more minutes before we actually start um Which one was it? This one? Do you remember which question? I believe um, she's asking the same question I emailed you about. So it was this one. Yeah, I have. I poured your email. It's this one, isn't it? Question. I think it was about the. We're not at that one. It was uh, about. The the, I think it was question five. Configuration. It was question five, I think. Yeah, that's number five, yeah. So what's the relationship between A and B if A stereo centers have the configuration RS? So the question is for number five is to figure out what the configuration is on B, right? Mm -hmm. So let me do this. Let me, um, let me see if I can, I want to take a screenshot of this because I need to write on it. Because there's a these are Fisher projections. And so there's a way to actually look at them. Uh, to figure out what's going on, right? So we said it, it gave you that this was R, and I'm writing with my mouse, so excuse my crappy handwriting. And let me make sure I'm recording too. I think I am. Uh, okay. Yeah, it is recording. Okay, so this thing changes every day stop every day all right so it says this that these two are rs it gave us that right and yeah. hey let's figure that out though <clears throat> so would it be an official projection let me show you how to i think i talked about this in the video so anytime you have a Fisher projection, that's basically like, it's gonna look like this. That is, it's crappy because I'm right with my mouse, but this is, oh, hold up. You so say you can't see my screen. All right, hold up. Let me do a new share. What about now? Yes. Okay. So, so we got this, right? We, so the official projection is like basically looking from underneath the carbon, kind of like looking under a car. And so if you, if the carbon is, if it's tetrahedral like this, and I'm just going, this is crappy because I can't write. So if it's like that, right? What official projection is basically looking from this view underneath it. Right, so what you're gonna see is four groups, kind of like that. Let me erase that little bar. 
right? So in a <clears throat> in a Fisher projection, we're gonna talk about, <coughs> talk about some more of these in a minute. So the two top groups are on a dash. So if you got an atom in the middle, let's say carbon, the two top groups are gonna be on a dash. And then the two outside groups are gonna be on a wedge. I like that. And that's crappy. Please excuse that. All right, you following that? And that's for any any carbon, any fissure projection. So the rule is, <clears throat> since this is the the standard uh, confirmation where the two top, uh, the top and bottom are going back into the screen, and then the two horizontal groups are coming out, right? The way you determine configuration is for a fissure projection, you got to you prioritize it, and then you find out where the H is. So priority wise, this is my chiral center. And the groups around it, I have iodine, I have hydrogen, I have a carbon right here, and I have another carbon right here. All right. So when I'm when I'm prioritizing this, we're going to talk more about configuration in, a, in a, today. But when I'm prioritizing this, iodine is going to be. What did I just do? Oh shucks! I got to show. I have to do it again. That was done. All right, so when I'm prioritizing this, iodine is going to be number one. It's going to be highest on, on this stereo center. Iodine is one. And then between the two carbons here and here, this carbon is going to be two. And then this carbon will be three. And then hydrogen is going to be four. Hydrogen is always the lowest priority group on an atom unless there's a long pair. The long pair is the only thing lower in power than a, than a hydrogen. All right. So far, so good. Yes. Yes. All right. So when we when we prioritize, when we prioritize, then we can determine the configuration, right? Clockwise, if if the if the groups are oriented clockwise, right, it's R. If they're counterclockwise, uh oh. That was off the screen, my bad. All right, if it's counterclockwise, <laughs> then it's S. R is rectus or right hand, that's clockwise. S is sinister, left hand, counterclockwise. So when we prioritize these groups right here, so one is here, is that right? Yes. Two is here, and three is here. Follow me? Mm -hmm. So when we count to three, are we counting clockwise or counterclockwise? So one, two, three, that's going this way, isn't it? Yes, counter. Counterclockwise. Okay, so now, even though it's counterclockwise, H is on a horizontal position. When that's the case, you got to reverse it, right? So if it's counterclockwise, it will be S, but the fact that H is on a horizontal, we have to say that it's R. That's how we do Fisher projections. Ooh. If H is vertical, we leave it, right? I always, I always like to teach that by saying if H is pointed up towards heaven, keep it. If it's is going it, horizontal towards hell, reverse it. Is it always going to be H or just it just it, yeah, it whatever the lowest if the lowest priority group? Okay. Right. If the lowest priority group is horizontal, you reverse the the uh, configuration. So even though it looks like it should be S. The fact that this is horizontal means that it must be R. That's for any Fisher projection. We're going to do more today. <laughs> so don't worry. Don't panic. All right. Same thing with the bottom. Let me, is, is everybody clear on the top? Yes. All right. Let me do, let me do, let's do the bottom stereo center. Cause see now when you have more than one stereo center, that means you got, you have to, do uh, that both stereo centers are gonna have a configuration, a specific configuration. Didn't mean to erase that. All right, so that's R. On the bottom, this carbon right here is my stereo center. And then I'm gonna prioritize. Nitrogen is one. Is that right? Because it's high, it has a higher atomic number yes. than the other groups. So hydrogen, carbon, and carbon, right? So nitrogen is one. And I'm only looking at the first atom. I'm not looking at the hydrogens attached. I'm only looking at the nitrogen. That's all I care about. All right, so nitrogen and then 
which of these two carbons do you think is going to be two? And how would you tell the difference? The about one on the top. The top would be two. Yeah, because this carbon is connected to an iodine. This one is connected to a hydrogen. I see this. So that, that's the point of difference. Yes? Yeah. No? Mm -hmm. All right, so that's one, two, and then you know this one is going to be three. And then the H is going to be four. So now we can count to three because we don't care about H. So that's one, two, three. Is that counterclockwise too? Or is yeah. that clockwise? It's counter. Counterclockwise, right? So it should be, it will be S. And then you flip it. Then you flip but then it. H is horizontal. So this got to be, this R. Be R. So I think that's the problem in the question because it's R. I think I gave it as RS. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's the problem in the question. So we'll fix that. And if you got it, I'll actually just put a three points extra credit because I think it's worth three points. Mm -hmm. So this is RR. Are you following? Yes, sir. So now let's do the other side. All right. So this carbon right here is my stereo center. And then, of course, this is one. That's two. You don't even have to work. Try to reprioritize it because you already did it over here. And that's three. So what is that? It's a counter it's counterclockwise, isn't it? Wait, so yeah. why is the second T three and put a two because it's attached to the nitrogen? Which one? This one? Yes. You said why is it not two or, or why is it three? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're right. Hold up. Boom, boom. You're right. This is two. My bad. Oh, yeah. I got too excited. So now that's what? That's clockwise, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So this is one, that's two, and that's three. You're right. So boom, that's clockwise. So what would it be normally? It would be R normally, but now it's S. Now it's S because the H, because the H is going to hell, right? It's horizontal. <laughs> so now this is S. And then on the bottom, let's do the same thing. We're looking at this carbon now, right? So nitrogen is one. The top carbon up here is two, and then this carbon is three. Yes? Is that also clockwise, or is that counterclockwise? That's counterclockwise. That's counterclockwise, and I'm counting the three. One, two, yeah. three. That's it's counterclockwise. But right. H is horizontal. Is that right? Uh -huh. So we're going to reverse it. You following? Uh -huh. So the fact that if it's counterclockwise, it would normally be S. But since H is horizontal, we're going to turn it, we're going to change it to an R. So now what's the relationship? This is SR, this is RR. Are, are they diastereomers or are they enantiomers? And how do you, how would you tell the difference? Let's think well, about it. They're not a mirror image. Not mirror images. Why? Because if this, if B was a mirror image of A, then both of these should be different, right? They both should be the opposite of what's over mm -hmm. here, right? right? right. So this, this is RR, the mirror image by default has to be SS. Is that right? Yep. Okay. But it's not. That's why it's, a, and it's a die, because one it's, of them is different. So now these are dash. I'm not gonna try to write this whole word out of this mouth. Okay. But they are diastereomers. Let me put some dots out here. Y'all know the rest. Oh. So, so, so now, question. say that again. I was gonna say, so with dice, with that, basically it'll look the same, but only one of them will be a mirror. Yeah, only one, only one stereo center will be opposite. Yes. Okay. So let me fix that, and it should. But I have that here in the dice. Maybe the explanation is wrong. I might have copied and pasted it because I have it here as dice. Yeah, right. the um, feedback says that they're marriages. Yeah, I think I just was being lazy. Okay. Copy and paste. What did we say that was? That was RR, wasn't it? Yeah, it's R. What are you doing? My computer is a piece of crap, by the way. So stuff takes stuff that normally would take a millisecond takes like a half a second. Let me see what's in the feedback. Blah, 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 blah. I can't see what's in the feedback. They're not. That. Yeah, that's my fault there. Now that's better. And I'll change all uh, if you got that wrong.
then I'll give you the points back. Matter of fact, I'll just add three points uh, back to the quiz because <laughs> I think that was worth three. But they did give us a chance to um, they did give us a chance to to talk about Fisher projections, so that's good because we're gonna we were gonna do that anyway today. Okay, that's good. Oh. Yep, yep, yep. All right. Any other questions? I think that was that was a, a, a good introduction. So we've talked about uh let me go back to my iPad so I can write properly, even though that's pretty crappy too. Are we also gonna go over pre existing stereo centers? Not today. I'm gonna send videos for that today and we'll do that Wednesday. So okay. don't do that quiz yet, because it's not gonna make sense to you. Uh, late, but okay. You already took it? Yes. Send me an email so I can reset it for you because I don't want you to have a bad grade without the preparation. Now, if you watch the video and still make a bad grade, I can't help you with that. No, I'm just joking. Just send me a, <laughs> send me a note, <clears throat> email, and I'll fix, I'll reset your attempt. Okay. Matter of fact, who was that? I can just do it now. I mean, not now, but I'll write your name down. Juanita Smith. Okay. I'll reset it for you today. Because I'm going to send that video out after class. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yes. Uh, for the um, homework assignments, mm -hmm. are we doing all the questions or just the highlighted ones? Just the ones that are highlighted. Okay. And then if we do, um, <clears throat> if we do any other questions, then that's just icing on the cake. Mm -hmm. and like you know we did this one right here to uh, uh friday we, yes we at that one so it's just icing on the cake okay and also for the <laughs> problems that are highlighted in the syllabus those are just for practice yes okay like cool, the ones cool. highlighted in the syllabus are practice problems yes okay awesome all right let's oh. let, let's uh do something real quick just as a quick exercise to make sure that you're not uh slacking uh let's look at Paclitaxel, which is a anti-cancer drug. Uh, my wife actually, when she was in chemotherapy, before she passed, she actually was taking this drug. That was like the first thing they gave her. Uh, it's a, uh, it's from a, it's a version of Taxol, which is, comes from the Pacific yew tree, but it takes a hundred years for the, one of those trees to grow back. And the bark from that tree, you're only gonna get like a milligram of, of this from it. So somebody had to figure out how to make it. So a professor down at Florida State actually made it, patented the synthesis, sold it to Bayer, and now he sold it for like $2 million, and then he gets royalties every time they sell this to a cancer clinic. So there's a lot of money in chemistry if you do it right. But let's pick out the, the chiral centers. How many chiral centers do you see here? Hold on. Real quick. And how would I, and, and, 11. 11. Yeah. Let's see. Let's pump. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Who was that? Was that you again, uh, Natalie? Yeah. You're trying to get all the lunch money. I ain't got no money today. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. That, that's right, though. That's 11 stereo centers. Why is this not a stereo center? I'm, it's just a quick exercise. To, to, Which one? Why is that not a stereo center? It has the same two substitutions. Substitute those, two, those two methyl groups. Mm -hmm. And because of that, that's a problem, right? That, yep. that means it's got to have four different substituents. And it only has uh, two substituents that are different. Are we okay with that? Yeah. All right. I just want to make sure now because that's the kind of stuff that you'll see on a test. I might ask you to pick out all, of, all the chiral centers. And then I know for a fact there's another question I'm going to ask about the number of stereo isomers. So if you got 11 stereo centers, how many stereo isomers are possible? Two to the what? 20, oh, wait, two to the 11. Two to the 11? Yes. I'm not expecting you to know that off the top of your head, but. That's a lot, yeah. You, you get it though, right? Yes. You sure. also understand that the, that number of stereo, the fact that that number of stereo isomers are possible and you only want to make this one, Right, that means you got to know your stuff, and you got to have reactions mm -hmm. in place to set all of these stereo centers when you're making this compound. 
That's mm -hmm. why it was such a, I think it took them eight years uh, to finish this synthesis, the uh, professor at Florida State. Eight. I can never remember his name. I know his first, first name is Robert. My, I think it's Robert Hoffman or something like that. Eight years, because you only want this. Why? Because this is the one that binds to the receptor that kills the cancer cells. Mm. Not not any of the other one million <laughs> compounds. Wow. Yeah, it is very specific. Right. How come the carbon with the double bond O that's also attached to the nitrogen on the far left? How come that's not us? Right there. Yes. That's you again, Juanita. Yes. Tell me why. What's the criteria for uh, for chirality? What's what's yeah. the number one criteria? Four different groups, right? Yeah. How many groups are attached to that carbon? Oh, uh, it's only three. Three. So it can be chiral. And plus, if it's got four different groups, that by default is going to be sp3 hybridized, right? And this is mm -hmm. sp2. Any sp2 carbon can be chiral. All right. So that's a good little warm up. Let's go down here to it asked to draw the enantiomer, but we're not going to do that. But you could, right? If you, if I ask you to draw the enantiomer of this, and I gave you a blank structure, well, I gave you the structure without the chiral centers and then one with it, what would you do to every chiral center in there? Reverse it. That's exactly right. So this would be wedged, this would be dashed, so on and so forth, all the way through that molecule. Everywhere you see a wedge, you would make it a dash. And everywhere you see a dash, you make, excuse me, make it a wedge. Yes? Mm -hmm. All right, let's go down here and look at some of these other examples. Uh, come on, Russell, get it right. Get your smile and your life together. <laughs> All right, let's look at these examples over here. I know it's not a highlighted problem, but we gotta, we gotta warm up before we jump over there in the deep water. All right, so tell me if C, if, if that, uh, this carbon in C is a, come on, Russell. This carbon, is that a chiral center? Why or why no. not? No. No. Why, why not? It's the situants on both ends. It's symmetrical, isn't it? Mm hmm So that's, right. that's, a, that's a problem, right? What about um, this carbon? Is that a chiral center? No. no. Is it? It's sp2, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, what about this carbon right here? Yeah, that one's good. It's a power center, isn't it? Now, mm -hmm. <clears throat> let me use this example to talk about configuration, right? So every power center has a configuration. That's what gives it the shape, right? It's either mm -hmm. going to be right-handed or left-handed. We talked about that already, R or S. Right? Mm -hmm. I think that was in the first set of videos I sent out. So it's either going to be RS. The way you determine whether it's RS is you got to do two things. You got to prioritize. First thing you got to do is prioritize. <laughs> and so priority is based on atomic number. So, um, be sure that you get it it's based on, I'm, I'm abbreviating atomic number as Z, right? Mm -hmm. You remember that from GCHEM, yeah? Mm -hmm. All right, so priority is based on the atomic number. And so if we look at the atoms, we're going to compare the groups. Now, for this example, I want you to make sure you understand this. If you don't see the fourth atom, it's understood to be hydrogen. And notice mm -hmm. where it's going. It's going back into the page because the bromine is coming out of the page. Yes right. or no? I was actually just about to ask that. Okay. Yeah, it's going back. So anytime you see a, a, a stereo center like this, it's un the hydrogen is understood because it's a skeletal form for one, and the direction of the hydrogen is based on what the direction is of the group that's on the wedge. So if that bro because remember every carbon is a tetrahedron, right? And so if the okay. carbon is on a wedge, then by default the hydrogen is going back into the page. Go ahead. Somebody, okay. I heard somebody getting ready to ask a question. Is that okay? Yeah. Yes. Right. So now let's prioritize these things. So bromine, we know is going to be one, right? Because this the atomic number is 79. 
That's right. Hydrogen is always four. It's always your lowest mm -hmm. priority group. And so now you got a carbon right here and a carbon right here. Now you got to pick between the two. Remember the other day when we were looking uh, at determining whether something was a chiral center? And I told you about moving to the next atom until you get to a point of difference. Yes. Well, yes. That's what you got to do here. Right. So for these two carbons right here, looking at this carbon, which is a CH3, right? And this carbon is a CH2. But it's connected to it's also connected to another carbon on that side. Are you following that? Right. Mm -hmm. So that carbon on the on the left is going to be higher priority. So we're going to call that two and that three. Right. Okay. Yep. So yes. When I first started teaching at Tuskegee, I, this was I spent a lot of time on this section trying to get folks to see in three D, and I, mean, I, I promise you, I would love to do that. But right now, we got to keep pressing because we don't we in a compressed time zone. So. Uh, if H is going back already, I'm teaching you a shortcut because y'all like shortcuts, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. If H is already going back, right? It's already on a dash. All you have to do in a situation like this is count to, two, count to three. And if it's clockwise, mm -hmm. it's R. If it's counterclockwise, it's X, right? So here's one, here's two. Uh -oh, sorry about that. Here's one. Two and three. Is that clockwise or counterclockwise? Counter. 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 So what's the configuration at bromine? Yes. Right? Are you following that? Yes. Since H is already back, that's another, that's one of your other uh parts of your uh method for de uh, for determining configuration, right? You prioritize and then you rotate to get H away from it. I know you saw that in the video when we talked about the steering wheel confirmation or steering wheel. Yeah. So get the top three priority groups facing you. That's the, that's a, another part of determining configuration. But we this we're gonna do it a uh, shortcut method here. So since H is already back, you just prioritize count, and what you see is what you get. Is that clear? So what is this gonna be a Fisher projection? No, this is not a Fisher projection. I'm, we're going to do a couple of those in a minute. Okay. All right. <clears throat> now, let's do the the, uh, the opposite yeah. of that. What if bromine is coming back like this? What does that mean? Where is H? It's on the wedge. Wedge is it's right here. In the, follow me? Mm -hmm. yes. That's for any carbon. Whatever is wedged, if it's drawn in a skeletal form like this, and it's drawn in 2D and it's flat, if whatever is wedged, by default, the other group is dashed. It doesn't matter what it is. Mm -hmm. All right, so so bromine, <laughs> if I put bromine on a dash, that means hydrogen is wedged. What's the configuration there? That one would be an R. It would be R. It's got to be R, right? But let's see how we can how we can say that or determine that using some methods. Some methodology. You know it's R because when you look at the top example, the top example was S. But if we say this is one and this is two and this three, which way are we counting again? That's counter. It's still counterclockwise, isn't it? But the fact that H is on a wedge, we're just going to reverse it. Mm. So instead of it being S, we're going to call it R because of how H is oriented. That's the shortcut. If so, H is, if H is on a wedge then it's the opposite. If H is on a dash, it is what you see. Mm. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. when, you, when you take this one right here and flip it around, so let me show you what I'm talking about. We took it and flipped it around. It would look like this. Wouldn't it? If I took that and I rotated it, the whole molecule mm -hmm. around, it would be it would look just like the mirror image of the other one, which which it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that the same type of thing that um I had asked a question in the chat about um five point three nine and like I was trying to figure out why it wasn't um R and why it was S. It's like 
Was that the same type of situation with that problem? Yeah, you have to flip. Which, have to which question was it? Was it on this sheet? Yes. Yeah, it's 5.39. Five point, okay, here we go. Boom. Which one is it? A. A. A? Yeah, let's do A. Because I think we got it. We warmed up now. The juice is flowing. So let's do A. A, it has one chiral center. Again, why can't this be chiral? It's SP2. Don't waste your time trying to figure that out. Why can't this be chiral? Yeah, it's now four, well, it's now four groups. It's got it's two a CH2, two, right? It's got two different, two of the same groups. Yes? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Now let's do this one. So now we got OH is one. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And then you have three choices for two. You got the ethyl group, the methyl group, and then this other carbon down here. All right. Which one of those do you think is going to be two? And how, how do you know? The carbon down. This one? Right here? Yeah. I agree. Right? Because this carbon, so let's look at it. So remember, ethyl is CH2, CH3. Follow me? Mm -hmm. And methyl is CH3. So when I'm comparing these, I'm looking at the first atom. Carbon, carbon, and carbon. Between these two, the ethyl, and this one, those are both going to be higher priority than the methyl group. Mm -hmm. Right? The right. methyl is going to be, in this case, four. Right? It's the lowest priority group. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. So now we got the OH is one, and then between these two, this is carbon. It's a carbon here and a carbon here. But then when we go to the next atom, this carbon right here is connected to an oxygen. This mm -hmm. carbon here is connected to a hydrogen. Right? Mm -hmm. Y'all follow, following that? Yes. Yeah. So this is going to be, this. that makes this group down here two. Is that right? Yes. And then that makes this group up here three. Okay, question. When you're giving priority, mm -hmm. you're looking at what forms, I guess, the ethyl group and the methyl group, for example, you're only looking at the largest uh, atomic number. But how you said for ethyl is yeah. CH2 and CH3, you're only looking at just carbon. You're not adding them all together. No, don't add, it to, don't add anything. Just look at the first atom that's, that's bonded. Okay. So this is one. Looking at the carbon. Yes, and okay. then if since they're both the same and have the same atomic number, I got to move out to the next atom to figure out which one is different. You okay. following? Yes. You sure? Yes, I just wanted to make sure. Okay, so now this is a little different, right? Because four is not on a wedge or a dash. So now. We got to do, we have to do something a little bit different. All right. So I'm going to show you how to do this one too. This, there's a method for it. There's a method for everything. Right. So if I draw that out as a tetrahedral, I need some room. I'm just going to take that stereo center right there. Following. So that's the carbon that's in the middle. And I'm going to just rotate it. I'm going to draw it like this. Uh oh, didn't try to do that. As a tetrahedral. Following that? That's if you flipped it. I mean, so all I did it. was tilt it back. I'm tilting it back that way. All of your courses and you're here for the first Yes or no? I need my man, I should have got my models. What? Right? Oh, so you see how it's kind of this bond right here? It's kind of down here. Right. The bond yeah. between these two carbons right here. Oh, yes. So all I'm doing is tilting it. And when I do that, that ethyl group is going to be pointed vertically. And then the OH and the methyl group are going to be here. Yeah, right, because you, you want one, 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 two, and three to be facing you. Yeah, So, so I, but I got to get to a point where I can do that first. So I'm going to put this as, this was two. This was three. Come on, man. That was three. This was one. And this was four. Is that right? Yes. Right. So what I want to do is get four away from me. I want four where one is. Right. So what, what can you do if we, we talk about this Friday, I think. You got a tetrahedral like this. What can you do? Can you put a little axis up through here? 
and rotate around it like a rotisserie? Yeah. yeah. yeah let's do that. So if I took that box, so it's like a carousel, right? Mm -hmm. Is that right? So if I turned it, y'all didn't. And one of y'all told me it was a carousel. And then when I said it, y'all looked at me like I was crazy. <laughs> so that's three, right? What's yeah. going to happen to one? Where is one going to come? One's going to come here, isn't it? Yes. And then two is going to come here. And then four is going to come here. Yes or no? I'm going to circle. Yes. Okay. So with that one, it's a little bit different. Oh. I have a method. For, for doing balling, you can turn any car, any chiral center to a ball and stick model. And the fact that four is not uh, on a wedge or a dash, then you got to do something a little bit different. The prioritizing and all that stays the same, though. I got you. We following? Yes. yes. All right. So what is that? So let's let's put that in the steering wheel. In the steering wheel, it'll look like this, right? So this is one. That's two. And that's three. Is that R or S? S. It's kind of clockwise, isn't it? Yeah. I'm going like that. So this stereo center would be what? Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes or no? Yes. See, in, or, in order for me to get, in order for me to determine the configuration of something like that, I can't take the shortcut in this in this case, because four is not on a wedge or a dash. Bless you. I have a question. Go ahead. So with the four, we like uh, switched it over. Why did the four move up rather than just staying where it was? So I thought we switched it. The one would still be in the same spot, being that they're wet. Mm -mm, no, no, no. So if we took how do I, let me, let me see if I can uh, put this, I need a blank spot. Uh, let's do it right here. So if I have it like this, right? And uh, okay. the ethyl group was here, right? And then the OH was here? Yes. Uh -huh. God dang it, stop it. All right. All I'm doing, I would, so carbon is naturally a tetrahedral, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Really, I hate. <laughs> Sorry, I don't really hate my iPad. I just hate technology when it does what it's supposed to do. <laughs> so that's naturally what carbon looks like, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So all I'm doing is taking this, and I'm gonna take it and tilt it in that direction, so I can make it look like a tetrahedron. And when I do that, what happens to that ethyl group is it go, it's going to be pointed straight up. That's going to be on that vertical axis. And then this group over here is going to be on that on that little horizontal axis like that. And that'll make this come out and that go back. And every, every chiral center can be resolved into one of these little tetrahedrons. That's how you do when you have big molecules, you just need one separate. So where would the OH be then? The OH is going to be back here, where it is. And then the methyl group that was right here is going to be right here. We just had to change it because the OH uh, yeah. was we, one. We didn't have a, a way to do a shortcut with four being pointed back already. Mm -hmm. And we couldn't apply the shortcut because Four is on a horizontal line. It's not on. It's not even on a vertical axis. So applying the shortcut would make the methyl group like change. Like what? What was the purpose of applying the shortcut? We, no, we didn't apply. We didn't apply the shortcut. Okay, you didn't apply the shortcut. Right. Because let's go back to the examples where we did. Okay. Yeah, because it wasn't on the. The way. You see how, like, we did this example over here? Sure. Okay, so all this stuff. You see how the, the H is already pointed back? Yeah. Right? You see in the other example, let me see. Like, if we were to do one like this, you see how the H is already on one of those vertical axes? Yes. Yeah. Here, the four, 
the group four, the lowest priority group, is not in a position like that. So that's why we had to go through all of the rigmarole. So we took that and turned it into a tetrahedral, and then we prioritized. And once you prioritize it, you just need to rotate the uh, molecules so that you get four away from it. And the way you do that is to just put an axis like this. What this is what it looked like. So we had two was over here. So one, two three and four like that, but we want four away from us so we can so we can determine the configuration. All right, so the way you do that is to turn it. Like, so turn it in that direction. So we turned it and made four. Um, so four and one swap places. It's kind of like a turning a, 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 a dial or a knob, right? Yeah, so if you turned it, then the four would actually be in the spot where the one is. Right. Turned and like then two. one would swap places with two, and two would swap places with four. Oh, well, well okay. Because yeah. everything has to move, right? It's all, it's all bonded and connected together. So if you turn it, every, every atom has to move. What about that three, then? The three is on a vertical axis, and that's where my... Um, that's what my axis is, so that's what I'm rotating around. So the three wouldn't move because when no. the vertical axis. Right. Okay. And everything else would just shift. Yeah. It's okay. like being on a carousel at the amusement park, right? The pole in the middle never moves, just the horses. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Let's do some, let's do a couple of more. We got time to do a couple of more. Make sure I'm on, on, I'm on my stuff over here, too. I even wrote down some notes. I'm, I'm trying to be a better teacher. One day it's gonna happen. All right, let's do uh, B. What about B? That should be easy. It should be quick too. Right, prioritize it. Is H already going back? Who is R? H is already pointed back, right? Yeah. So then this is going, nitrogen, that nitrogen is gonna be one. This side is two, that side is three. And then the H is already back. And that's, that's by default, four. that's four, right? Yeah. Because it's the lowest priority, it's got the lowest atomic number. <laughs> so what is that? Yeah. R or S? R. R, we're not gonna put it. Is it clockwise? Okay. Yes, right? Yeah. All right, good. I like y'all. Y'all smart. What about this one? Go ahead and knock that out. Okay, which one? That one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, H. This is a this is tricky. That's why I picked it. H oh. is already back. Is it so, is? so that's already back. Now you got these two carbons that you worried about, yeah. So is it? Yeah. And then the so what do you have to do when two of your groups are the same? Keep going down. Uh, keep going. So this carbon and this carbon, right? Okay. Now, which one of those two carbons is higher in priority? Yeah. You want it? You want the to say right this one. one, don't you? Yeah. It's got big old ring attached to it. Is that right? Yeah. But it's right. actually this one because of the branches. You see how that has two two groups attached, like a branch, mm -hmm. and this one doesn't. Oh, right. The, this carbon does, but we're not going to get to that one because the point of difference comes when the this car when the branches on this carbon take precedence, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that yeah. that side is going to be higher priority. So this is going to be two. That's going to be three, and then chlorine is going to be one. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. that makes sense. You always want to look for that point of difference when you're comparing your atoms. Let me R. Is that R? Everything is R. This must uh, be. Is it? Is, that's R, right? That's clockwise. Yeah, that's R. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's a holy day. Everything is R, right here. Not sinister. All right. What about this one? Let's do that one, and then we're gonna do some Fisher projection. All right, 
What do you think? We know that H is, if H is on a wedge, what's automatically coming to your mind? I got to yeah. reverse whatever I get, right? Right. So fluorine is, is higher than carbon, so that's going to be one. Yeah? Yep. And you got this carbon and this carbon. Which one is which one is a higher priority? We just, the, we just saw one on the left. This one, right? Because it's branched. Right. Yes. Right. So this is one that's two. What's the difference between that branch and the other one? Okay, good question. Which carbons are we looking at? We're chewing at the top. We're looking at these two, right? This one and that one. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So this this one over here, the branches are immediately seen, right? Right. But on the other side, <laughs> on three, the branches are on the next carbon over. Mm. So they don't count, right? You, right. Know, you, you, you see these branches before you get to these branches. So that's why car this carbon is higher priority than this one. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah. yeah. So when a carbon has branches on it like that, it's, it, and you're comparing it to another carbon without branches, that's that's an automatic, uh, it's automatic by default that the, the branch carbon is higher in power. I should write that down. I'm gonna use some shorthand. All right, so that branch carbon is higher priority than the other one. Is that, is that making sense? Is it clicking? Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Is it clicking and light up watching the video? Because that's like kind of the, that's the, the groundwork, the introduction part. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. And once you watch that, even if you don't understand it, when we start doing the examples, then it'll start making sense. All right, let's do some more. This is fun, right? Yeah, somewhat, I guess. Somewhat. All right, let's do... Hmm. Let's do Wait, this. So that one we flipped it right because hydrogen was. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. So how did we even finish it? I don't think we finished it. it was <laughs> Three. So is that five. right? That would that would be counterclockwise. But yes. the fact that H is on the wedge, we have to reverse it. Right? So R. R. Holy day! That's three R's in a row. All right, let's do F. Let's see what we can, what we okay. can do with F. Okay. All right, let's do all the chiral centers in F. So let's start with this one. Just warm up. Because that's going to, H is already back in. So what's one, what's two, and what's three? This is a CH3, by the way. And then you're comparing that with these two carbons right here. That's what you prioritize. So, I bet you don't have no the one, one to the right uh, is one. hundred dollars, you don't have right. no clippers. The carbon to the left is two. Two, then the CH3 would be three then. So yeah, yeah. you're saying four. this is? The one to the right. Yeah. One. Okay, and that's two and that's three? Yes. Okay, I like. I think this is gonna be a good class. Who was that, by the way? It was me and me and Miss Baldwin, <laughs> we kind of did it together. Me and Miss, who is me? Who is that? <laughs> I'm sorry, Brianna. <laughs> oh, okay, all right, all right. So that's one, two, and three, and H is already back. S or R? Looks it looks S. like it's going counterclockwise. Is that right? S. So that's yeah. S. Now let's do this one. That one is not as trivial, right? Bromine's means one. This is one. Chlorine is going to be two. Is that right? Mm -hmm. yeah. This is what this is one of those cases where four is not going to be uh, on a wedge or a dash, right? Mm -hmm. So we got to do a little extra work for this mm -hmm. one. So that's one, two, and you, uh, if you can do that, then the rings are not difficult, right? Once you prioritize them, just turn them into tetrahedral, right? We're going to okay. actually do the ring because I want I want you to think I'm letting you off easy. So, oh, he showed us easy stuff in class, but it was hard stuff on the test. Mm -mm. <laughs> no, we do the hard stuff now, so everything becomes easy. So, of, of these two carbons, this one, uh-oh, 
and this one. Which one? Which one do you think? The one with the oxygen. Exactly. Right. So that's going to be three. Three. And then this is four. Is that right? Yes. Yep. Okay. So here's the here's the the the, the uh, task. What would you do? How would you turn that into a, a tetrahedron that looks like this? Let's see. Let's see what you made or what you got. Let's do it like this. What would you do? Oh, just rotate. Rock it like a, I would rock it. And rotate. Like a boat. Push it up. So the chlorine way. would be at the top. Mm -mm, bromine. You see how right. bromine is coming out Wait. like this? Uh-huh. Can you see my hand? I know it looks coming. Right I would push bromine it like that is way. coming out. Yeah. You see that? If bromine is out, I would just Oh, okay. okay. So now it's at the top. And the chlorine is in the back. Yeah, boy, I tell you, who was that? This is Quenisha. All right, good job. I'm trying to I'm I'm trying to make the, the stakes high. So I'm gonna ask a hard question before we get off. So think we can do the yeah. I owe you a hundred dollars. Yeah. So wait, question. <laughs> Go ahead. I mean, it's on the wedge. Mm -hmm. When it come, ever comes to the point where I have to draw my own tetrahedral, I should leave whatever's on the wedge as the like the main line of the axis. You know what? You can do that. But let's if it's like this, right? If it's if it's a chain, because look at the look at the ring up top. You wouldn't have to do that in this case, would you? Because you already have something going vertical. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. On this side, you already have a vertical axis, right? Right. Right. And then at the top, now the top one you could apply that. You see that? Because it, it has the same mm -hmm. shape as the carbons in the chain. Is that right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So then you would do it for that. Right? That's a great question. That, that was a really smart question, by the way. I think this is going to be a good class. It's, it's already shaping up. I can usually tell by the first few lectures whether it's going to be a struggle bus class or it's going to be a good class. This is going to be a good class. So here's my tetrahedral. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I have three over here. And I always just like just turn these into balls, right? Make it easy. And then this was one, and that was two. What do you got to do before? Oh, we have to uh, put it on rotate it. it. Put it on that carousel. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At the at the fair. Get your funnel cake. Turn mm -hmm. it. What's going to happen to four? Where's four going to go? To the back. To the back where chlorine is. Is that right? Yes. And yeah. then chlorine is going to come with three years, and three is yeah. going to swap with four. Is that right? Yes. So let's yeah. try that. Let me see if I, can, if I can squeeze it in here. So four ends up here. One is here. And then two is here, and three is here. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So now we just need to count to three. It's still, it's still S. Count the clock. It's S. Great. Man, y'all smart. I like that. So this is S also. Do you, but do you see how you can go from taking a shortcut to all of a sudden now I got to do something different? It depends on the, what you're dealing with. Like everything is going to be dependent on that. So Dr. Russell, just to clarify, even though we found a configuration without the lowest priority being on the, the, um, the dash, we still mm -hmm. have to change it. Yeah, you keep that. Mm -hmm. You keep that because see the lowest priority group is not wedged or dashed at all. You can't apply the shortcut. Oh, so you only apply the shortcut if the if the lowest priority group is on a wedge or on the dash. Okay, good question. Y'all are y'all are y'all are doing great, by the way. I like that. All right, somebody do the Fisher projection H. Whoever finishes this first has lunch. We got four minutes. Is that right? Are we 9 30 to 10 30? So we doing both of the carbons. Gotta do both of them. Can't get lunch half step. We gotta do them both. Okay. Again, what are you looking for if it's a fissure projection? There's a everything has a pattern to it, right? If it's a fissure projection, your mind should be is H horizontal or is it vertical? Mm 
That's the first thing you should be thinking about. Mm -hmm. And if it's horizontal, I know that everything I see, I reverse it. Is that right? Because mm -hmm. in a fissure projection, these groups are actually wedged, mm -hmm. right? And the top, the vertical groups are dashed. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And if it, when you see ME, that's just an abbreviation for methyl. It's a CH3 group. One time a student asked me if it was methylenium. Methylenium? Yeah, they thought it was an element on the periodic. They was looking for it on the periodic table so they could prioritize it. You use one of the configurations for both of them or just the top one? No, both of them. Okay. The that. first one with it, actually, instead of blurting it out, just type it in the chat. First one with it. I'm looking at the chat now. Okay. Okay. Quanisha got it. She said it was RR. Oh, and I got another one that said SS. So now we got a so we got two finalists. Oh, not two finalists. Quanisha and Natalie. <laughs> so if whoever is right is gonna get lunch. All right. So let's do let's do it. What's what's uh <laughs> on this chiral center right here, what's the priority? Oh, OH nice. is one. Oh, is that right? Yes. Mm -hmm. This carbon down here is going to be two. Two. Right. Mm -hmm. This metal is going to be three. Three. H mm -hmm. is horizontal. Going to hell. Gotta, going to hell, you got to go back. Right? Okay, it's S. You got to so flip it, one. yeah. So this yeah. is... That's R. It's clockwise, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. But H is going to hell. So you got to change it. So it's R. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And let's, let's look at the bottom one. The bottom one says that this is, that's mm -hmm. one, that's two, and that's three. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. And that's clockwise also, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. That's but H is horizontal, so you have to flip it. So that should be R, but it, it should be what? S. S. So nobody was right. Damn. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. That's all right. I was saying the same <laughs> thing in my head. Cause I thought I thought we were going somewhere with that. <laughs> I'm just joking. Mm -hmm. I'm just joking. Hold up. Let me make sure. Let me look at the top one again. Eight, huh. I think it's S S. I think it's S S. It's S S. The yeah. first one is S. Yeah, you're right. Natalie got a lot of right. Hey, Natalie. <laughs> thank you, just, thank you. Where am I? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I owe you another lunch. <laughs> but that's good though. Wait, what, can so, someone? Let me ask, go ahead. I'm confused. Why is it S now? Okay, so the, the the groups are oriented in a clockwise fashion. Is that right? Right. But the H is horizontal. So I have to reverse it because this is a fissure projection. Right. So, so, so if, if the groups are oriented clockwise, uh -huh. that would normally be R. Oh, I'm tripping. Okay, but yes. But since H is horizontal, I turn it, I reverse it to S. Right, right, yeah, yeah. I just yes. Uh, I'm is it Kanisha? Is that right? Yes. Sorry, yes. Well, it's Kanisha. Kanisha. I'm just all right. So, just email me, and we can set okay. something up. All right. Uh, here's another question. What would the anatomy of that look like? How would you draw it? That Fisher projection. It would um it would be the mirror image. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it would be. It would be um O H on the left. Like that. Yeah. And eight, and yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure that we so all them definitions don't matter if you don't know how to apply it. So I'm I'm always gonna be asking questions that refer you back to some information that we already covered. You because you can't forget stuff. Everything matters. So if it was a diastereomer, how you said? Yep. If, if I would, if, if I do the diastereomer, good question. What would it, you asking? What would that look like? Right. Yeah, let's do it. We got to So this would be OH, and that would be OH. That would be one diastereomer. Oh yeah. Okay. You follow me? Mm -hmm. And the other diastereomer would be with the OH is on the other side. Both at the top. You following that? Yeah. Yeah. And 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 the and with, with diastereomers, you're only changing one stereo center 
from the original image. So that's the original image. So I left this OH the same and I changed it. You see that? Yes. And then in the, in the mirror image of the dodge steerer, it will be the exact opposite, right? Right. I will be leaving this OH the same and changing this one. Right. But you only change the stereo center at a time. Okay. Yeah. I think we got to stop. Uh, it's 10.32 and I'm going to take some time today to chop up these uh, videos so okay. that I can put them on YouTube so you can refer back to them. Because this was a good, a good uh, lecture, a good class. A lot of good questions. All right. Are you posting videos for Wednesday? Yeah, I'm gonna post a, a, a do we what do we do Wednesday? Wednesday was just I mean like patient. No, Wednesday we just went over the syllabus, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Friday yeah. we started learning. Friday we started. So from Friday and today, I'll be posting those today. I'm gonna start chopping them up as soon as we get off. Uh, for so for, for Wednesday, I'm gonna send a new video, and I, what this is what I want you to do now. I'm gonna put you, I'm gonna kind of put you on your own. But a new YouTube. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna send it as soon as we get off of here, so I don't forget. But I want you to do this problem, and when we come back Wednesday, we're gonna open up with that, and then we'll start that next topic. You still got me for the opening reopening my quiz. Oh yeah, I, I wrote you down. Okay. I got you. I did it Don't too, Say again. I did it too, but I think I, I think he gave yeah, us I thought it two was attempts. The quizzes were up, so I thought we were just supposed to do all of them before. Monday. No, I just did that for my own sake because I know me. I got a million things going, so I would have forgot. Okay. Yeah, but I'm about to I'm about to reset it. Anybody, if anybody took it and wants to be reset, just put that in the chat real quick. That way, I'll know who to reset. I have a question. Go ahead. So for the quizzes, are they due like the week of or are they due before the exam? Everything's due before the exam. The quizzes are due after you watch the videos. Okay. I wouldn't wait because what's going to happen is you know, the other 35 classes you're taking, uh -huh. you're going to have stuff due and you're not you going to have that quiz just hanging out there. And then when it closes, then we get an email. Dr. Russell, I don't know what happened, but uh, can you open it back up? So just take it after you watch the video. Okay, because I already watched the videos, um, and I just haven't had a chance to, to get to the quizzes. Yeah. So Long as, they're already still open? It'll, yeah, it's open. That Now, it will stay open until we take the test. Then all, the, all that stuff will close, and then we'll be in another section. Okay, yes, yeah, sir. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. All right, so before we go, <laughs> I want y'all to look at 537. Look at the question, what it's asking. How many stereo isomers would you expect? How do you know that? Okay, two. Two to the end, if you know yeah. it. So you gotta be able to do two skills. You gotta be able to identify chiral centers. And then right. the second skill is you gotta know how to take that little exponential formula and plug in in and get the number of stereo isomers. Is that right? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, so that's two skills. And then, I also want you to practice on, this is not highlighted, but that this will be, you'll have questions like this on the test, 538. Okay. Drawing in answers. My suggestion, draw a line here and just draw the mirror image like that. Okay. If it's, if it's easier for you to just reverse everything, then do that. But Also, with that, for enantiomers, you only switch up the uh, chiral centers, right? Yeah, all of them, not just one. If it was only one, it'd be diastereomers, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you need to switch if, if for an enantiomer, everything switches because it's a mirror image. Everything, not not just the chiral centers. No, every chiral center. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna. Uh, I want you to do those. We'll start out with that Wednesday, and then uh, we'll talk about the pre-existing stereo center stuff. There's another handout that I'll open up, and then that way you can have it to follow along and fill it in. And then on Friday, 
what are we doing Friday? On Friday, I think we'll just do a little review and then we're gonna, I'm gonna introduce another topic. And by the time we get to the exam, we'll have a, a nice uh, block of information that we can take a test on. Cause I think those quick tests that come up quick, I think that's much, that's better, it's more beneficial for you. Dr. Russell. Yep. Um, for the assignments, um, when it, so like, do we um, like print it off and write on it and scan them? Yeah, you could do that. If you got a printer, some people don't have a printer. So if you wanna pull it up in your device and annotate it and then upload it that way, you can do that too. Okay. Yeah, however you want to do it. Because I, I don't really require them to be printed and scanned because some people don't have printers. Okay. So if you can find a way to write on it, if you got a touch screen laptop or if you got an iPad or something like that, do that. Okay. So we just take freehand, like we go, like wrote it out and everything ourselves. Would you take that? If you did it by hand, sure. Okay, good. I ain't, yeah. nah, I ain't tripping about that. If you turn your work in, I ain't going to tell you, oh, no, you can't handwrite it. That would be stupid. Okay. Some teachers yeah. may be stupid. <laughs> I'm not one of them. <laughs> yeah. But I know we do have some, some people like that. That's, po they, that's a power trip. That's ego. When it only got to be one way, yeah. that's egotism. I don't do that. So if you handwrite it and turn it in, by all means, if you turned it in, we good. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Eight minutes over. Uh, I have one more question. Go ahead. So for and I think it's called like antimeters. It is, it is, like change everything. Mm -hmm. Everything's gonna be. And antimeters. Yeah, and antimeters. Okay, I just I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Just wanted to clarify one thing. Go ahead. When a compound has two. Uh, Cairo sound centers. Uh -huh. um, I was reading that you would think there'd be four enantiomers, but there's only actually three because of a meso com compound. Well, uh, so for meso, it's different, right? Uh, a meso compound would be something like, uh, let me see if I can, can y'all still, I know, I'm not sharing right now. Meso compound would be a compound that's not chiral but it has chiral centers in it. And it just happens that one side is a mirror image of the other side. I can show you. Mm, okay. Hold up. Let me, let me do that right quick. That's a good question. Watch it, watch it, watch it take forever. Just watch. <laughs> I was just wondering, cause in the handout, it was um, asking for the number of stereoisomers. And I noticed that like, um, some of them had like three mm -hmm. when I was thinking they would have four. So, so if it's got, if it's got three stereo centers, then it's going to have eight stereo isomers. No, I mean like it, it had two centers, but it only had three stereo isomers. So I was that, thinking that's not that possible because the, the formula is two to the N. Yeah. But then one was a meso, a meso, I guess. So, so it was so the so if one of them was meso. It's still a stereo isomer. It's just not chiral. Okay. Because if it's meso, that means that uh, come on. If that means that the uh, again the chiral centers one side is a mirror image of the other side, and so it just kind of let me give you an example. So if you have something like this, <laughs> where the two chiral centers are adjacent. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. There's actually a mirror plane right here. And this side and this side look I look like they're mirror images. <clears throat> and so if that's the case, then the compound itself will be what we call a chiral. Because it's meso. So the, so that means that one side is a mirror image of the other side. And that takes away the chirality because now it's symmetrical. So even though both of these are chiral centers and they both have uh, a configuration, overall the molecule is not chiral because of that, because of the fact that it's meso. Okay. But it's still it's still considered a stereoisomer. It's just not it's just not chiral. Okay. Yeah. So if it's three plus a meso, then 
the meso still counts. It's still four total, but one of them is just eight count. Okay. Yeah, that's a good question. Every time I think I can sneak past meso, I can't. Somebody always asks about it. So thank you for asking me. Um, can you for um the five point three nine um mm -hmm. letter A? Can you go back over how you prioritize that one again? Because I kind of get confused. Five point three nine A. That's on the other page. Yeah, here. How how do we prioritize this one? Yes. Okay, so <clears throat> the ethyl is CH2, CH3. It was kind of messy too, so that didn't help. And then the methyl is CH3, right? Okay. So basically, <clears throat> the first atom is carbon, 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 oxygen. Right? right. That's because this is your chiral center right here. Right. <clears throat> so with oxygen, it's going to be one. Right, because it's got a higher atomic number than carbon. Yes. So now you're just comparing the carbons. Right? So with this carbon right here, it's connected. The next atom it's connected to is hydrogen. Right. When you when you look at this carbon here and this one here, those two are both connected to other carbons. And so they're both going to be higher priority than the metal. Okay. So it's so that when you go to the carbon, yeah. that's why I had that confused. So that so would mean that, um, that, hold on, wait a second. So we're going to go to the next atom, which is right here, right? Right. And then for this one, we're going to the next atom, which is right here. Right. And when we compare those two atoms, that's where your point of difference comes in. Okay. Right, because this one is bonded to hydrogen, and then this this one right here is bonded to oxygen twice. Right. Yeah. So the priority was one. We, we said that this one is going to be four. That's the lowest right. compared to the other two carbons. And then the top carbon was three, and then this carbon was two. Okay. I didn't know that for CH2, for ethyl, you have to go to the C. The next, the next atom, which in that case was a CH3. What was a carbon? Okay. And the next atom here was also a carbon, but that carbon was bonded to something other than hydrogen. Right, I understand now. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. All right. Any other questions? All right, I'm gonna stop sharing and stop recording. And I'll make sure all of this is on the recording too because somebody is listening with the same question but they're not asking questions, so that's fine. All right. <clears throat>